Hi everyone, um, I am giving a video lecture on uh, one of your lessons in uh, the UG textbook Zeitgeist Readings on Society and Culture. And uh, this lesson is entitled Toba Taxing. It is a story by Sadat Hassan Manto. Uh, Let us take a look at the slides. You can look at the screen. Um, a Toba Taxing is a story by uh, Sadat Hassan Manto and here is a uh, picture of Sadat Hassan Manto. He was born in the year 1912 and he died in 1955. He was uh, some details I like to give you about Sadat Hassan Manto. Uh, here is a description. Uh, Sadat Hassan Manto was an Indo-Pakistani author, journalist and screenwriter. Uh, basically, he was a writer in Urdu language and he wrote stories, uh, screenplays um, and many of these were rendered into uh, too many languages including English. Uh, he actually uh, lived during the period of India's struggle for independence and after India became free and India was uh, partitioned into India and Pakistan, he uh, left uh, India for Pakistan. Uh, but uh, his stay in Pakistan uh, continued to be a very disturbed one. He was not able to uh, cope up with the new situation for several reasons. And all of you know what happened in India and Pakistan Im immediately after uh, the partition or uh, the horrible days of uh, partition. Uh, he uh, fell into a kind of a situation of depression and uh, he became um, alcoholic. Uh, and soon he passed away. Actually, he lived only a few years after the partition of India. He uh, died at the age of uh, 43. But in the short span of his uh, career as a writer, he has contributed 22 collections of uh, short stories, one novel, a series of uh, radio plays. So it is uh, a little information about uh, Sadat Hassan Manto. And the story for our consideration now is, as I told you, Toba Taxing, uh, which is in the first module, part of the first module in the textbook. And um, this story is about, um, or it is related to the horrors India and Pakistan experienced, or people of these two countries experienced after the partition. And uh, everyone knows that it was a kind of madness dividing the country on uh, religious line or maybe on community line or any such, uh, I mean, segregatory lines was actually a kind of madness in as it realized. Uh, I don't mean uh, those, those who stood for uh, such a, a partition of the country probably might not have uh, even uh, imagined anything of the kind to happen like that. But India and Pakistan uh, ca came to be, I mean, um, to experience what's called a, a bloody situation, literally, uh, on both sides of the border. Uh, and this story, uh, Toba Taxing, is a very interesting story which our author Sadat Hassan Manto wrote in Urdu language and it was rendered into English by uh, one um, Tahira Nakhwi. Uh, taxing actually as uh, the title of the story, Taxing was the name of a, a great uh, uh, Sikh leader, leader of the Sikh community. Toba means a pond and uh, this ha came to be uh, accepted as a place name, a, a place name known after the great Sikh leader Taxing. There was a pond. And the uh, story goes to the effect that he used to, taxing used to give water, drinking water uh, to everyone, every uh, traveler, every passenger or every individual passing by that place, irrespective of his caste, religion, community or national identity or anything of the kind. 
and maybe the author has some uh, good intention uh, or maybe loaded ideas uh, in choosing this uh, for the title of the story. And this, uh, you see the story is about uh, uh, actually uh, two, three years after uh, the partition of the country, uh, India and Pakistan agreed on exchanging or transferring um, the civilian prisoners and inmates of the asylum uh, mutually, which means uh, prisons in Pakistan had some civilian prisoners belonging to India. And asylums in Pakistan also had some inmates whose relatives uh, belonged to India. So they were to be handed over to India. And likewise, Indian uh, prisons and uh, asylums had people who, whose relatives belonged to Pakistan. So they were to be uh, given back to Pakistan. And this was uh, the basic idea uh, on which the story is built. Um, Sadat Hassan Manto says that what happened uh, in India uh, while uh, carrying this out, while bringing this into practice, he doesn't know. But what happened in Lahore in Pakistan was a, a, a very, I mean, um, attractive, a, a, a very uh, unexpected kind of uh, situation that came into, uh, uh, into prevalence or that came into existence. Uh, in fact, um, uh, this uh, Lahore Asylum had uh, inmates who belonged to the new territory known as Pakistan, who belonged to several regions in the new India, and Anglo-Indian inmates also. There were three sections of people. And there were people from all uh, walks of life. Uh, in fact, um, um, some were really mad, some, were, uh, f some had fully lost their uh, sense and uh, uh, there were still some people who were not actually mad, uh, who their relatives managed to get them into those asylums to escape uh, action or I mean criminal procedures against him for the crimes they, they, they committed. So. Um, this is the background. So how did the inmates of uh, the Lahore Asylum respond to the idea of uh, transferring uh, the inmates uh, between India and Pakistan? This was uh, the, the, the central thing in the story. Uh, to introduce you some of the figures appearing in this uh, story, uh, you see th there was a guy who used to read uh, Zamindar daily regularly who is familiar with many of the developments taking place outside the prison or outside the asylum. There was one guy who uh, pretended to be Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan. There was an inmate who, an inmate who uh, refused to, I mean, uh, to be neither, part, uh, neither to be in India nor to be in Pakistan. And one day he ran out and cl climbed on uh, a tree and refused to, to come down for uh, a couple of hours. He was uh, creating such a scene over there. And uh, the guards and the security people in the asylum struggled hard to uh, make him come down. There was a Muslim engineer who was really um, um, completely out of his mind and who once uh, stripped his uh, clothes off and uh, ran about and created a scene. Uh, there was a fat Muslim inmate, inmate uh, um, yeah, actually, whose name was Muhammad Ali, and he claimed to be Qaeda Azam or Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the leader of uh, Pakistan. Then there was a Sikh man uh, who declared he was Master Tara Singh. Master Tara Singh was a great leader of the Sikh community, and this Sikh man. Uh, claimed uh, to be Master Thaira Singh. This, uh, then another figure appearing in the story is uh, a young lawyer from Lahore uh, who lost sanity over uh, his uh, tragic experience in the love affair he had. Actually, he was, he was um, very committed to uh, his, uh, I mean, um, uh, his love. Uh, but it was an unrequited love and uh, there wasn't, um, I mean, he found it uh, completely lost and naturally um, uh, he lost his sanity and his uh, dilemma was that he actually belonged to Lahore 
but if he was to go to India, uh, um, now his his problem is that his uh, uh, the, the the young woman he loved uh, belonged to a particular place which was going to be part of uh, uh, India, and uh, he was to continue in Lahore because of his or taking into account his um, uh, having to practice there as a lawyer. So. Um, so, uh, and in the European world also where uh, some people actually they were <laughs> worried about uh, the new situation. What's going to happen if uh, um, the inmates are uh, exchanged? Uh, will we be further or con uh, continuing to be treated as I mean, uh, European people and uh, we get special consideration, we get uh, European food, etc. Or their major concern was whether they will have to eat uh, the Indian of food, chapati, etc. So such things. Anyways, the uh, the the central character, the the protagonist of this story is uh, a man named Bishan Singh. You find it on the slide. Bishan Singh. Uh, he was actually a, a sick man, and he was in the asylum for about 15 years. Uh, and he used to uh, repeating a. A gibberish, you know, gibberish, a nonsensical utterance, just like this opera D, Gurgar D, Annex D, by Damir D, Mang D, Dal D, of Lal Tain, etc. And sometimes in the new situation, uh, in the situation of uh, partition of the country, uh, uh, he used to, to add this expression uh, to it of the Pakistan government. And later on, when he became very much obsessed with, with his place, Toba Taxing, um, he used to add, to add to his gibberish this expression of Toba Taxing government. So uh, the question for him was, where is Toba Taxing? They are talking about partition, and they are talking about uh, uh, exchanging uh, inmates of the uh, asylum. Where will I have to go? is the question. I belong to Toba Taxing and uh, Toba Taxing used to be part of uh, part of India, the undivided India. Now where is it going to be is the question. He being a Sikh man, just like Hindus and uh, Sikh, all other Sikh uh, inmates, he will be handed over to uh, the government of India. And uh, this particular territory he uh, was uh, very much concerned about where it was going to be. He does not want to go anywhere else. Uh, just he likes to be uh, in Toba taxing. And this uh, Bishan Singh, um, uh, because of his repeated reference to uh, this name, place name, Toba taxing, came to be known as Toba taxing in the, in, uh, in the asylum. He was, his name Bishan Singh was almost forgotten. He was known as Toba taxing. And actually for 15 years he hadn't taken a shower uh, he had not um, uh, slept at all. He does not even lie down. Uh, he used to lean against a wall, just that, for 15 years. And um, uh, he, he had close relatives, wife, uh, child, uh, a daughter, etc. They used to come to him all, uh, every month before partition, before uh, this asylum, Lahore asylum, came to be part of Pakistan. But now, after a partition of the country, they ceased to come. They stopped to come. They are not coming at all. And uh, towards the end of the story, when um, the inmates are being uh, transferred, you know, uh, a, a man by name Fazal Din uh, came to him as a visitor. Actually, his close relatives had asked Fazal Din to take special care of um, uh, Bishan Singh and uh, to give him some gifts as well. But because of, you see, uh, the hectic schedule of the man, uh, he could not pay a visit to him until now. Now that he is being transferred to uh, another country, uh, he came uh, with some, uh, say, uh, trophies and uh, some gifts for him, and also uh, told him how uh, he supported his, uh, his, his close relatives by uh, Balbir Singh, by Wadhuwa Singh, Sister Amrit Kaur, etc., uh, in packing up their uh, things and uh, leaving for India. He, uh, yeah, Rup Kaur also. Uh, actually, he, 
uh, had a daughter also uh, who was um, uh, whose name I shall just mention to you. Uh, his daughter's name was Rub Kaur. Uh, actually, this girl um, used to come to uh, this asylum as a visitor to her father uh, for a long period until India was partitioned. Uh, and now she has stopped coming. So Fazal Din, when he came to visit Bishan Singh, gave an account of uh, all members of his family and uh, uh, gave him uh, some gifts as well. And um, at that moment, Bishan Singh asked, uh, uh, asked Fazal Din where Toba Taxing was. And uh, he unwittingly, without much thought about it, told him that uh, Toba Taxing is in Pakistan. And now uh, it was a big shock to uh, Bishan Singh. Toba Taxing is in Pakistan and uh, he was going to be sent to India, Hindustan. Why are they sending us to Hindustan is the disturbing question he had. He was completely upset by the remark made by uh, Fazal Din that he was being sent to India when uh, Toba Taxing was in uh, in Pakistan after partition and this was a shock to him and the guards in the asylum uh, struggled hard to um, I mean uh, bring him round uh, and later on when the day of actual transfer came actually it was a very cold night uh, and officers were struggling hard to take the inmates of the asylum to the border to the Wagga border and there um, but he kept asking the officers uh, Bishan Singh kept asking the officers where Toba taxing was and one of the officers, Indian officers told him that it is in Pakistan and this was a big provocation when uh, you see his turn, Bishan Singh's turn came to cross the border he uh, I mean, uh, just ran away and he refused to, uh, to obey the guards and he, he uh, was so I mean, stubbornly against uh, uh, going to India and he uh, refused to uh, obey the, the guards who were uh, in charge of uh, the transfer of the inmates. Uh, he uh, chose a spot, you see, actually in, at the Wagga border uh, in a little space between the two countries, actually the territory belonging to the two countries, the no man's land. He occupied himself there and refused to, to uh, move to India nor to Pakistan. He stayed there and before, uh, actually uh, I told you, he had spent almost 15 years in that condition without lying down, without ever sleeping day or night. And now on the border between India and Pakistan, he was standing uh, erect, you know, on uh, the land between the two uh, territories, refusing uh, to step neither to India nor to Pakistan. And the guards had to deal with the rest of the uh, inmates who were being transferred, so they paid attention to the rest of them, leaving him alone there for some time. And before, what happened is that before next morning or before the sun rose next day, uh, they heard a cry from Bishan Singh. It was probably the last breath from the man. He, with a cry, fell down and he was lying dead on the ground, uh, on the f wired fen fence between the two uh, territories. On one side of uh, Bishan Singh was Hindu Hindustan and the, on the other side was Pakistan. And he was lying fully stretched between the two countries, uh, a spot where um, uh, a spot which did not belong uh, to India or Pakistan. This is uh, a, a quintessential summary of the story. Actually, um, we will have to go to too many meticulous details about this. We have to gather more about the author, um, the language aspects. Uh, of course, uh, most of the unfamiliar words have been explained in the textbook. So you, you can, um, I mean, uh, now go ahead to reading the uh, story. Uh, and gathering more and more information about um, uh, uh, Sadat Hassan Manto's uh, creativity about this particular story, the theme, of, um, I mean, uh, 
uh, dealt with in this particular story, etc. This is just uh, to introduce you to the kernel, the core ideas of uh, the story. It deals with, as I told you at the beginning, um, with with um, the the uh, kind of madness which was known as communalism, which worked very much uh, during those years back in in the 1940s, or uh, immediately after the partition of the country, and early 50s as well, uh, when people on uh, both sides were becoming crazy, killing each other, and making a tough time for um, each other. Actually, this was the situation. And uh, uh, the, the whole idea of dividing the country into uh, two on the basis of religion or community uh, was for many people a, a very unacceptable idea, a very unacceptable experience as well. And in practice, it was uh, it brought about a terrible situation. In fact, our author, Sadat Hassan Manto, was a victim of uh, the, the kind of activities or the kind of headlessness shown by people those days. He could not uh, understand or he could not come to terms with the new situation at all. He found it extremely uh, unacceptable, extremely disturbing, which uh, made him almost um, uh, very much uh, depressed or in the hold of depression. And he was driven to alcoholism, which brought about his uh, premature death. So with this, I'm winding up. You can go ahead with uh, further reading the story and uh, gathering further information about Toba taxing and our author, Sadat Hassan Mandu. Uh, and once again, uh, he was an Urdu writer, but he has been uh, translated into several languages, including English. And he is one of the uh, best known authors among uh, in the partition literature. Uh, to uh, pinpoint his, or just to uh, label him, he was actually one of the uh, best known uh, writers belonging to the partition literature category. Thank you so much.